What is that bright white star in the sky? Whether you're an early riser or you've been driving after dark in recent weeks, there have been two very bright stars shining in the east. Could it be the North Star, Polaris? Definitely not. It might be famous, but it's actually only the 48th brightest star in the sky. They are, of course, not stars at all, but planets, and two of the most famous planets of all. It's Venus. From January through September, the closest planet to Earth dominated the post-sunset night western sky as the evening star, becoming ever brighter, before sinking back into the sun's glare. Then it did the opposite, appearing to rise higher into the pre-dawn sky in the east during a dazzling, morning star, phase. Venus, now shining at a magnitude of minus 4.5 in the constellation Leo, reaches its greatest elongation west, tomorrow. That's how astronomers describe its farthest distance from the sun in the morning sky. About 46 degrees, so about halfway up the sky. Something that logically makes it more easily seen by more people. It will remain relatively high for a few months, dropping back into the sun's glare next spring to re-emerge in the post-sunset sky in the west next summer. As an inner planet to Earth, it can never be seen moving across the entire night sky, as the outer planets do. In fact, from Earth, Venus appears to have an eight-year cycle in which it orbits the Sun 13 times and waxes and wanes between being a morning star and evening star every 19 months, according to timeanddate.com. It's partly a line-of-sight thing. From where we are in our orbit of the Sun, the closest planet to us, Venus, appears to move back and forth from the Sun's glare into the post-sunset or pre-sunrise night sky. Go outside a couple of hours after sunset this month and you'll see a bright planet rising in the eastern sky. That's Jupiter, which is now shining at a magnitude of minus 2.9 in the constellation Aries. NASA's Juno spacecraft is currently buzzing around it taking incredible images of the giant planet and its moon Io while the European Space Agency just launched its JUICE mission to take a closer look at the three other giant moons Europa, Callisto and Ganymede. Point any pair of binoculars at Jupiter and you'll see all four moons, unless, that is, one of them is in front or behind the giant planet. As an outer planet to Earth, Jupiter orbits the Sun much more slowly. In fact, it takes Jupiter 12 Earth years to complete one orbit. So it can be seen slowly moving across the entire night sky with respect to the background stars, and it's therefore Earth's changing position in the solar system that is the biggest factor in when and where Jupiter can be seen. Once each Earth year our planet gets between the Sun and Jupiter, this moment, called Jupiter's opposition, sees the outer planet at its biggest, brightest and best of the year as seen from Earth. It's only then that we can see 100% of Jupiter.